I love butterflies um, in all shapes and forms. Whether they've come out of a magazine like these ones from Daphne's Diary. And these are lovely because they are double sided. Um, many possibilities for that. Whether you've just found a charming napkin or a serviette which has got some lovely images. Or perhaps you might even have found just a glorious stamp set that's got butterflies. Um, we've all got access to them, but what do we do with them? How do we make ephemera with these lovely things? Let me show you how in the next few minutes. So probably the easiest one to begin with is perhaps the butterflies that came out of a Daphne's diary. These were just little perforated edge butterflies that you simply just push out and there were a whole load of them. This was probably towards the end of last year that these came out. And what I've done with these is first of all taken some of them and made just a little hole with my cropper dial and put an eyelet in and then taken one of these little bulb pins, which are those, you can get these online, and just made those as a dangle. Now the nice thing about these is that if you put them as a dangle on your journal, you will actually have some colour on both sides of the page. So that for me is a great idea to work with. The second one that I did was also using my cropper doll. I made a little hole and put a nice eyelet in. And then I just took some coloured thread that I have. I might still change this to something thinner. But I thought that this would be nice just to hang in the middle of a page. Um, just so that it almost floats like a little butterfly would in a normal page. So, you know, it can be quite a nice little addition. Almost perhaps like a bookmark but not quite the same as a bookmark because it would be part of your decoration for your journal. So those are two ideas that I've got with that, but you could also simply just take a butterfly and fold it in half and then put that in the center of your two pages. So I would just put glue here, put that in the center of your pages so that when you open up your journal, the actual butterfly is there. So let me show you what that looks like. So I have here a sewing journal that I'm working on. It hasn't been bound together at this stage because I'm still working on some of the pages. But I do have a, a theme of butterflies that is in between all the pages. And what I would like to be able to do with one of these is just to glue that down in the center of the spine so that as I open the book I can see the beautiful colors of, of the wings. Or alternatively if I took one of these that I have with a bit of twine on them I could perhaps stitch that through the page or even just glue it on the other side. Why don't my fingers want to work there? Glue it on the other side so that when the page opens this kind of floats a little bit and I think that that could be quite a nice addition um, to it. So to have your butterflies as part of your journal but in a more 3D kind of effect. So let's move on to the next one now. So for the next part I thought I'd like to show you how to do ephemera using napkins which have butterfly designs on. So you'll see from this particular napkin um, that I've got nine butterflies on each quarter. So really this is a marvellous find because you've got 36 butterflies on here. And what you need to know if you are going to use napkins is that they come with different pliers. So for instance this one had the top layer that had the design on and then there's another two layers here. So you're wanting to separate them first before you actually start to stick them down just so that you have that layer otherwise it becomes quite wrinkly and unpleasant. This particular butterfly design has got four in a row and they're no not quite one two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen so that's 26 52 butterflies all together and you can see that they've got a whole load of lovely colors so it really is worthwhile and you'll get a lot of fun out of one napkin. So what I would normally do is um, separate my napkin. So let's just put that aside. So I have the top and I might even separate the second layer from the third. Some napkins are two ply, some are three. This is three ply because you can see it's still quite white underneath. But it still has an imprint of the design on it and I can make use of that. So I would take my top layer and I would find a book page or a piece of plain um, paper whatever you want as long as you can see the design of your butterfly showing through and then I would just maybe tear it down the side so that that would fit the page and then if I put this down straight on here 
I would just simply pat, paint my matte medium over that because it is so thin um, that the matte medium will go straight through to the other side. And I do find matte medium is probably the easiest to work with, failing which you could just put a lot of your um, glue stick down and then just stick it down. So on this page I've actually taken quite a few of these images. I think I took those ones. Yep. And I stuck those down. But I have also taken pages where I have just taken what I call the shadow copy. And you can see how gorgeous that is because it just breaks up the surface of the book page and gives a lovely background design that you would be able then to layer with other things. So you've got a few options there. Either the top copy, which is the brighter design, or just this little shadow design, which you can use. Then you can also display some of your work on pages in different parts of the page, so that if you were wanting to use them for different things, you could. So for argument's sake, I could actually just cut this here, and then I could make a tag out of that, or I could have this as part of a journal card, maybe cut it down a little bit. This one I might even just use as a whole page because I've got a butterfly border there. But having said that, there are no rules. I could still come back here and turn those into maybe postage stamps. This one again, just a single butterfly on, but I could change that. And again, here are some more of these lovely shadowy images. Look how gorgeous that is with the book page showing through. So just to give you some ideas of what you could actually do with these various things. First of all, you would start off by doing some fussy cuts and then you are left with a whole range of different designs. Now when I fussy cut I tend to just leave this paper between the feelers on until I'm ready to stick it down because if it's moving around in my box with other butterflies I'm quite sure that those will break off so that is why I haven't cut those off just yet. When you've got all of those ready so now you've got a whole selection of these, then you can start to play. So I should need this piece of paper. So here I stuck down an old tea bag, used one that I dried and I'd taken out some of the tea leaves. I just put a bit of gesso on just to give it a slightly lighter background so that the color of the brown didn't show through the napkin. And I have something there that is really gorgeous that I might just use um, on a book page somewhere. And then at the bottom of one of these napkins, it just says, I'm home compostable. So I've even put that down because if you're doing a nature journal, that would be great. And that little one with the very soft colouring shows through nicely. And then having taken one of these that is layered onto a piece of book page that has some writing, I've torn that up into a smaller piece. Um, it had this word papillon, which means butterfly in French. And I have just taken a very fine piece of cloth. And I've simply just taken some of these threads and frayed it. So I've got this lovely sort of unraveled edge. And what I was thinking of doing with this one would be to put that down with some of my matte medium, glue that down, and then perhaps glue that back onto a book page to make up a design like that. So there's lots of options that you can do without being very sophisticated. Having said that, you can go a step further this particular piece of handmade paper was just part of an envelope that I had been given and because the handmade paper is so gorgeous I thought let me use it. So here's one of my napkin images. This is just a little bit of recycled card with a little bit of white paint on a piece of fabric, a little bit of stamping here and just some threads from when I was sewing the other day. So you've got a nice little sort of corner tuck spot there. I've made a lovely tag with this one. I used some diamond glaze. Um, which is this dimensional magic sorry but I'm sure you get other brands as well it does take quite a long time to dry but um, it does give it this really nice sort of shiny feel and again onto a piece of frayed fabric with some just fa um, threads tied in a knot and then I had stamped some butterflies which I'll show you in a minute and they had that little word so I did that and then just using a stamp block put a bit of texture there then using nice sort of colors um, this background paper was handmade paper that I'd had done with a stamp off technique and I'll link that video below because it's actually rather fun if you do have stamps and just using a paint marker to do a few little white dots 
And then I made a little folder here that one could actually pop something in. And I have, again, my little butterfly and some of my little stamped images, but I've just splattered some white on, and that's very nice. You can easily pop some things in there. So I'm going to clear this away, and I'm going to show you what you can do with stamps coming up next. So I've got this lovely stamp set, which has all these gorgeous butterflies on different sizes and the word. Let me turn it this way around. It looks quite dark because of the printed um, design on the acetate. But all I simply did was to ink this up and just stamp this down twice. So I already just have a whole load of different designs. I just used black stays on ink because obviously I wasn't sure what I was going to colour these with. And in some instances I did use some metallic watercolours, which are these really lovely sort of colors that you could use but they weren't the best option for me I found something else so I did use some of those which is why I needed to have a waterproof ink um, and then I started to color so the, the metallic watercolors give you this lovely sort of soft pearly color but they do go over the black and mask it a little bit so color is quite an interesting thing whatever color you put on top pushes all the other colors behind so for argument's sake, if I had done this butterfly with, it had yellow on first with a little bit of blue, but if I didn't like the blue as much and I wanted it to go more yellow, I could just add some more yellow to make that pop through. So let me just do that with a pencil crayon and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because once you understand this with colour, it really is amazing. So having done this with the watercolours, I did find that I had lost a lot of black and I just used a black um ballpoint pen or a biro just to to go over that but here you can see already that by going over with the yellow I've popped that up and the blue has subdued into the background so that's what I'm talking about when I say that so I had done some of these with the metallic colors and I like that because of the shimmer and fitting in with the butterflies but it wasn't my best choice I don't think I worked on them but it wasn't my best choice some of the images you'll see when I stamped here weren't 100% clear and I've just recently got a stamping platform but I've done this before and I even had some really grungy things like that but you know I'm going to use that if I'm doing a master board because it doesn't matter um, we'll be working on top of that so that is the basis for some of my designs just using a whole sheet of stamps and stamping and I literally just printed on scrap paper and then what I was left with were sheets of different colors which I cut out and then I've got a whole load of all of these different little butterflies in all shapes and sizes and colours. And they've been such fun to do. And my option that I think I prefer to do with this is to actually just use um, some pencil crayons. Um, because I'm able then to just to sit wherever I am with a board on my, on my lap and do this. And I can do much more shading. I did with some of them use my white paint marker just to find one to put the few little white dots on and they do really bring up the colors nicely. Let me just try and put these on white so you get a sense of some of the colors. And then what I did was make some things with these and um, I just think that they endless possibilities. I would just get a stamp set, stamp a whole lot and as you've got time sit and make them up. So a very simple little journal card. This was on a sort of a linen weave paper. Just stamped my three butterflies and coloured those in, which has given me some nice textures and things there. I had some little squares of card that were just simply off cuts, and again I stamped on those. Nothing very sophisticated at this stage, but you could build them up and put them onto something else. Then I had this piece of handmade paper that was actually a sample swatch and it's got this lovely wavy edge. So I thought, well, this could be rather a nice sort of border tuck spot um, for a journal page. So I've popped that down. Then I did another three in a row onto a piece of paper and I quite like that sort of torn edge that I did with my tear ruler. So I'll link that into the videos below. And um, I could add quite a lot to that if I wished this would be like a little mini billy band for something. I could tuck it in, I could wrap it around something. But I did use a white splatter paint on here. And that I made up myself simply by using a metallic white paint. Um, and I mixed it with a little bit of water 
into a spritz bottle but I did put two or three ball bearings in there just to get the color to dissolve it's very similar to um, yeah, the shimmer spray the delusions one but I did find that I went through this very quickly so I thought I'll make my own um, then I had some tags this tag I made using a soap wrapper um, that I had back home in South Africa it was gorgeous soap but I popped a little butterfly there on the logo, so that's come out nicely. This was just book pages. This had a stamp design on it with a few little black um, fine, t fine liner markers, just making little dots. And another little simple one. So the ideas aren't really over the top at the moment. I want to show you that you can all do this. Then I've got this lovely little one where they've got the lovely sort of colours and sort of a stamped image there. And then this one I made into a journal card with my buttons and just three very basic colours. I wanted it to look almost like a field journal um, with those lovely sort of soft colours. So my friends, I hope I've given you some ideas to be able to make things. Obviously you've got things like wrapping paper. Um, wrapping paper you can do similar things with and you can cut out pictures. I had this wrapping paper that had loads and loads of butterflies and bugs and ants on and I've just stuck that onto book page. You can see it's not transparent so I'd need to fussy cut that quite carefully. Look at the ants. I've set myself a task there. But you have got these lovely big butterflies that you would be able to glue back to back because they do uh, make a mirror image. And then with this particular set of wrapping paper I've got this lovely sort of um, watermark rose design. I'm going to put a little butterfly on there maybe. Um, this was another part of that envelope, which would again make a lovely little tuck spot that I could build up into something. And so you go on. So there are a million and one different ways to make butterflies, and I haven't even begun to show you some of the ideas, other ideas I've got. So I'll probably do another video someday. But for now, I hope I've given you some inspiration to show you that it doesn't have to be a time-consuming task, and it doesn't have to be too difficult. You can do things very, very simply at home. Bye for now.